I hate when people try to overcomplicate the tech world. As a person who's a current software engineer with two computer science degrees, I want to demystify everything by answering questions that you guys have asked me on my Instagram. Question one, how did you graduate with a master's at 20? Did you go to a specialized high school? So I graduated from Georgia Tech with the bachelor's of science in computer science at the age of 19, and I graduated with a master's at the age of 20. Now, how did I do it? Well, I first came into Georgia Tech with about 62 credits, which is two years worth of college already completed. These are the AP courses I took, and these are the dual enrollment courses I took. And so by the time I entered into Georgia Tech, I had my general education requirements completed, and I only had to take my computer science fundamentals, which I was able to complete in two years. On top of that, some of the upper level computer science courses I took at the master's level. So by the time I started my master's program, I had 40% of it already completed, and hence I was able to complete that within one year, which ends up being at the age of 20. And no, I didn't go to any special high school. Question two, can you give some guidance on getting referrals through LinkedIn? Well, this is the guidance that I give, and I've actually done this in the past where you reach out to an alumni who works at a company that you're interested in, such as Georgia Tech Company X. Well, you search through that, find the actual alumni, and then connect with them, and then ultimately message them. You want to say something like, Hi, my name is blank. I go to Georgia Tech. I'm interested in internship opportunities at this company. Would you be open to having a conversation? Ultimately, you want to get to the point where you have a phone call with them, and then in that phone call, you ask them for a referral. And usually they will give a referral because companies typically give their employees referral bonuses. Question three, how do you actually stand out in interviews? So a couple of big mistakes that I see people make is when they ask you, for example, what are your strengths or what are your weaknesses? Maybe you just say something like, my biggest strength is communication. My biggest weakness is my inability to prioritize things. But you don't actually give an example. Like, my biggest strength is communication. For example, I demonstrated my leadership skills in this club or experience that I had. Or my biggest weakness is my lack of priorities, but I'm working on this by doing X, Y, and Z. Like, you actually have to add stuff to it and prove that you actually have the skills that you claim to have. Another big mistake is at the end of the interview, when the interviewer asks you, hey, do you actually have any questions for me, not asking questions then is just like big opportunity that you're just throwing in the trash. Because that's actually a point where you can actually demonstrate your passions towards this company or actually find out if you actually want to work at this company for yourself. Number four, networking tips. So other than the obvious one, which is LinkedIn, and in that you should be connecting with anyone and everyone out there, another one that a lot of people tend to neglect is hackathons themselves. So hackathons are like these 72 hour coding marathons in which you come there with a team and you just code out a project. But usually tech companies come to those events, not only because they're sponsoring those events, but also they're looking to recruit potential candidates. And a lot of people are so focused on actually doing their projects that they neglect this big opportunity to actually potentially get an internship. And definitely take advantage of this if you haven't before. For example, Georgia Tech, typically companies like NCR and BlackRock come because we have a good relation with them and they also help sponsor hackathons. Question five, does university ranking standards matter when it comes to employment opportunities? So the hard truth is at a high level, yes, some companies do care where you go to schools. Some companies only recruit from top tier tech schools. So the matter of fact is some companies, yes, do care. Now, are you screwed in terms of your career if you go to a state school or a community college? No, you can still make it out big. And I've had a lot of friends who haven't gone to top tier tech schools, but still ended up in fame companies. But if you are in high school, definitely keep this into mind when you're applying to colleges. Question six, top three most important languages and what order should you learn them in? Number one is Python. It's an extremely beginner friendly programming languages. And a lot of those intro to programming courses actually start with this language. And if you're trying to learn on your own, definitely check out codedx.io. Number two is Java, and I actually started to learn how to program in Java and AP Computer Science, and so I think it's also a good beginner-friendly programming language. It's also the language that I use to learn data structures and algorithms, so I actually do all my technical interviews in Java itself. And number three is JavaScript, and specifically within JavaScript, React.js. This is great if you're trying to get front-end experience. You can learn things on free code camp and then actually practice on this thing called codepen.io. And I mainly use this language for project purposes or just like ad hoc functionality. Number seven, does GPA matter if I want to be a software engineer? If yes, what GPA is good? And any recs for beginner coding projects? That was definitely more than one question, so let's break it down. Does GPA matter? Well, with the exception of one company, no company has ever asked me for my GPA, and the one company that did want to know my GPA just wanted to make sure it was above a 3.0. So I always recommend to people to worry about getting internships over getting that 4.0 GPA. But obviously get as high of a GPA as possible without sacrificing your internship hunt. Beginner coding projects would be simple things like calculating in Java, or to-do list in Python, or to kick it up a notch and do a personal portfolio website. Question eight, how likely are freshmen in computer science to get an internship? Now, the reality of the matter is when you are a freshman, it is the toughest time to get an internship. You have nothing on your resume, you have no experience, and you have no knowledge prior to your computer science degree. But that is not to say that you can't get an internship. I mean, personally, in my freshman year, I got an internship at Amazon. And I'll make more videos on that in the future if you guys are interested. But just for starting out, the best 
thing that you can do right now is just learn a lot and then add projects to your resume. Start doing projects and then adding them to your resume so you can start stacking up some experience before you actually get formal internship experience. Question nine, is it normal to struggle in your first computer science class? Absolutely, yes, it's normal to struggle in computer science both as like a freshman starting out, a sophomore, junior, senior, or even as a full-time employee, struggling is normal in this field. In fact, I always tell people that the learning curve for computer science is pretty steep in that you start out not knowing anything and then one day things just start to click for you and then everything starts to make sense. Because becoming a programmer is like a shift in paradigm of the way that you're thinking. Like you got to start to think like a programmer and so few people are able to do that right off the bat. And so if you're struggling, don't worry, you're going to be fine. Just think of it like you're getting your bad raps out of the way. And so eventually things are going to start flowing. You're going to be building muscle and things are going to be fine. Well, that's about all I have for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions that you'd like me to answer, leave a comment down below and make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram.